We're now in the fourth video of my fluid tutorial series and in this video we're going to give our fluid a material and we'll give it a nice transparent water material. So we'll get started on that right away here. First off I'll go into edit mode and into the edit buttons. You'll notice when I go into edit mode that the fluid mesh turns back into the domain object because that's where the material is actually placed. Because the last material we worked on was the floor I'm going to select the default material first and then add a new material and that way the material for the fluid won't inherit any textures from the floor. And we'll select a color. Something in uh, blue will be good. Or a green would also work, but I prefer blue. I'll select a nice light blue color. And then I'll reduce the alpha channel because that's where the transparency is actually going to come into play is reducing that. I'll bring it down to around 2 in and around that area. And just by reducing that we don't actually get transparency. We need to also initiate one of the two transparency settings. There's two that I know of anyways. There's uh, Z transparency in the links and pipeline dialog and there's mirror transparency and we're going to use ray transparency to start off and at first it just goes quite ghostly I use ray transparency because it has some settings where Z transparency doesn't really seem to have much for settings and I'm not very good with the abbreviations or what exactly the names mean here so I'll just go through them as best as I can um, the first setting is abbreviated IOR and like I said I don't know what the abbreviation means I'm going to bring that up some. I know what it does. Um, it has my material follow the rules of refraction. And if you look now, the material is actually acting like a lens and distorting the tubes in the background. And that's what a fluid would do. Um, a drop of fluid round like this would act as though it was a lens. So we can play around with that setting until it's to our liking. I like it like that. Fresno and the setting after it which is um, the blending factor for the Fresno setting. Again I don't know technically how to describe what these two settings do but I can show on the material what it does. And we'll just take it that way. And by increasing these two settings what happens is the milkiness of the blue color that I assign to the fluid goes away and that blue color moves out towards the edges. It's still on the material but it's more hinted at along the edge of this globe now and it doesn't sit so milky on the, on the material. Next settings I'm going to want to change are in the shaders and I'm going to bring up the reflectivity just slightly and I'll also increase the specularity. The specularity changes how bright this spot that reflects from the light on the material and then I'll also increase hard a little bit and what hard does is sharpens that spot and makes it smaller and more distinct. And the last setting I'm going to change for now anyways is the emit light setting and this setting will have the material emit a small amount of light and it will give somewhat of a translucent type of appearance where it has the impression that light is entering the material and then scattering to come out as well as coming out in as a lens as well. So with those settings made, those, that's the bulk of the settings to start off and we can render this frame and have a look at what it looks like. It's 
notable that my render time has increased considerably. It's now up to 8 seconds, and that's sort of the price of using ray transparency and having this mass of fluid in the frame, which is almost a third of the frame now. And it's also pretty obvious that this fluid looks horrible. It's all dark and really doesn't at all reflect the material that I just created. And I found this a little confusing at first, and I tried all of the settings on the material itself that I could think of. And then I got the idea that maybe I was looking in the wrong place. And I looked towards my lighting instead. And inside the default lighting, it is set to cast ray shadowing. And I tried disabling this ray shadowing on my lighting. And at that point I was getting a little desperate because I was really having a hard time figuring out why the material was dark. But, as you can see, changing the fact of the lights ch casting shadows increased the quality of my fluid. Now, I would not suggest doing that to all of your lights. You want lights to cast shadows because that is a large part of this kind of imaging. Um, this fluid could still use some work, but before we do anything more to it, I'm going to cut out of my video and check on my time, and I'll be back in just a second. Well, there's not really all that much more I can do. I've played around with the settings on the fluid a bit and brought up the some of the settings in the ray transparency and tinkered around with uh, the alpha channel and and some of the shader settings and then I also added an extra light and I'll render the frame really quickly and we'll have a look at that Here's what the image looks like now, and there's not really a terrible amount of difference. Um, one notable thing that I did do was reduce the setting called ambient, and what that setting is is the amount of global color, and where that's most evident is around the bottom lip here, where it was going quite blue and it didn't quite look right. So that's one thing that is notable. And most of the other change is really not coming that much from the transparency settings anymore. Like with the issue with the darkness, uh, issue with getting a good defined shape from this transparent fluid is also going to break down to our lighting, which is why I added another light and one that would cast a shadow. And and when we're working with our materials and setting up our scenes and doing renders, paying a lot of attention to the lighting is is a good idea. I wouldn't suggest putting huge amounts of lights in because that's going to really increase render times. But trying to place them well and in places that will cast a little bit of shadow into the scene and make give one side of an object lightness and one side shadow is going to go a long ways to, to defining its shape um, it's very much like photography this is a three-dimensional model which we're then placing onto a two-dimensional output like a video or a still frame so lighting is a very key element in that process and I couldn't stress enough how much playing around with lighting is going to make a difference in our scene. So in the next video I'll be coming back and putting some motion to the fluid and we'll see if we can get it making some waves. So I'll see you in that video.